And, uh, and here he is now. It's good. You just watched that and said, that is a medley of my hairdos. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has got to be my favourite show that I've ever done. Well, Aww, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you are now our favourite guest we've ever had. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> really, who put well, that together? We'll, That's a lot of work. Thank we'll you. We'll see if you're saying that at the end of the show. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thank you. When you were, looking back at those, I read something the other day, and I don't know whether this is true, that, that you say you still get nervous when you perform. It still can frighten you. Um, I know that may have been a, an old interview. Old? I don't. I don't get. As a matter of fact, I. 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 I'm, I maybe. Maybe what, what they got wrong was that. I really am surprised that there are still people out there that uh, that come. I ask my stage manager every night, "Is there anybody out there?" And I really mean it. Well, after all these years, I'm not sure that I've got an audience out there. And every night, there seems to be more people younger. Uh, I think it's like, is he still alive? Let's go catch him <laughs> before he croaks or something like that. But they seem to be very kind to me. You so, have you very know. loyal fans, but, though. Yeah, you? oh yeah, especially here. Yeah. I th I'm sure that you know, but you know, but in Britain, when they like you, they like you forever. Yeah. And that's what happened to me. It doesn't matter with hit records or hit anything. They adopted me in 1978, and I started having a love affair with the British public. And it didn't matter whether I was on the charts or off the charts. Uh, we are friends, and it just keeps getting better and better. So well, you're I'm back. You're back in the. You're filling out the O2 Arena in May. I am. You are indeed. And you say that the show is specifically for those British fans, and in fact, it's a show that wouldn't work anywhere else. Yes, that's true. So, well, yeah, so that's why true. is that? Well, I'm putting it together. Well, uh, the British fans are a lot of fun. It's a, it's a, a really um, a lot of fun, and um, in in America, it's not that much fun. It's you know music, and it's it's great, but over here. Uh, it's, it's just wild. These 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 audiences are wild. It's and, like a party. Yeah, huh? It's like a party. It is. A, it's a big party. And this time, you know, I'm playing with the royal, the royal uh, uh, philharmonic the, orchestra. Royal philharmonic orchestra, which I've never done. Mm. Uh, I I played with an orchestra, a small orchestra, but this is the first time we're doing 65 to 70 musicians with oh, those songs, amazing. with Weekend in New England, yeah. you know, and, and looks like we made it being played behind me. I, I can't wait. I, I hope it sounds as good as I... born out of the proms in the park, wasn't it? Was that the initial idea behind it? Well, it was Warner. That's when we started. Yeah. That's when I started to think, wouldn't this be fantastic if I could do my concert? Because there we only did like four or five songs, but now we're doing two hours worth. And, oh, yeah. I can't wait. Well, you you, um, you say that the, the fans are once they're with you, they're with you forever here. Um, don't you and, know? Uh, don't you think so? Yes, definitely, definitely. I think if you if you are taken to the British public's heart, they don't know, care a about the performance as a he, singer. He, right, then that's they it. Just, You're there. They for, stay with you. Yeah. Um, but when when you first started out, um, <laughs> there they are, look, and there they are. <laughs> On cue. <laughs> um, when you first started out, that you you've you've said in the past, and I, I think this is right, um, that, uh, that there's no training for being famous. No one is no one trained you to be famous. No, and there's, in, no there's no school to go to. Yeah, when it when it started for you, I mean, it was such a massive change that it that it did your head in. It's interesting that you're going in this direction because my new album is about that. Mm. It's about fame. And can you take it? Can you handle fame? And how do you behave when you get it? It's, um, and, and you know, as I started this idea, you know, the first headline two years ago was Britney Spears. And, you know, the paparazzi following her oh. and driving her crazy. You know, I said, wow, how's this girl going to handle that? You know, I think they began to drive her crazy. And then you start to read and look at what's going on and you say, wow, how, do they, how are these? And I was there. Mm -hmm. I was there. This, I didn't mean this album to be about me, but as I began to finish it, I realized that I had lived through every song on this album. It's my first original album in 10 years. And uh, it's um, the most interesting thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. So when, when kind of Mandy hit and it was huge and you were 29 at the time, I mean, how did you, how did you cope with that sort of sudden? 
I, I, you know, you would think that I would I, I would be okay at 29. Yeah. I had conducted for Bet for Bet. I used to be her music director and her arranger. I'd done uh, work You'd like that. You've been around the industry. I've been around. I've done yeah. jingles. I've done everything. And when Mandy hit number one, everything changed, and I became a jerk. And I think that yeah, I did. Well, when I look back, I think I became a jerk. Uh, I didn't like who I was, and I didn't know how to pull myself back together again until one evening I looked up, and everybody around me, I had everybody around, I, I paid. I was paying, all my friends had disappeared, and I was paying everybody that was in the kitchen and outside, and I said, what, what happened to me? Where did I go? I mean, I, I used to be a real guy, and I, I wasn't anymore. And so then I made the choice to stop this and to go back to being a real person, the person that I like. And, but it was this fame success thing that knocked me off over like a hurricane. And I say a little prayer for the, for the people that are younger than I was and how I know what's going on. They're walking into the wings and people are saying, oh, you were great, you were great, could I have your autograph? Hey, go into the limousine. When you're 19 or when you're 15, how, how well, Justin you Bieber, that? I suppose, he's the current, he's the, he's the one at the moment, Justin who, Bieber, who, uh, yeah. who, who is, is having to go through what you went through, but he's at a much younger age. And right. it must be very difficult to surround yourself with people who are going to keep your feet on the ground. Well, I, I hope he's got a good family unit, because that, that, that will help. Yeah. And also, help. I guess now there's there's so much intrusion. I mean, everything's so much more in, instant nowadays. Sort of with you know people twittering and Facebook and all of the attention. And yes. there's there's so yes. much more publications that need yes. to be filled. It so wasn't like that with me. I wasn't yeah. the TMZ world, mm -hmm. you know. But it still knocked me. Forget about that part. It still knocked me as a human being. It knocked me over. Mm -hmm. And that's what I you know I, I see what's going on. So that, it's interesting is that this album is called 15 Minutes, and it's about that. And yeah. it's a it, it felt it felt like a a real interesting subject to write about. Yeah. Well, you were you started off. You you say describe yourself as quite a geeky kid. I mean, you yeah. were you you. I was a geek musician. Yeah. I, I was, and that was that would have been great. I I still look back and say, could I have been happy if Mandy never happened? Yeah. And I I think I would have. I I would love to have just been a member of the band or a conductor or the or the lead piano player in the band because I was having a very nice time. And then Mandy hit and. It was a big surprise because I don't know whether you know, I never wanted to be a performer. Never thought you about just singing. can't believe it. Never thought about singing, never thought about performing it. So when this hit, it was some, something out of the blue. My friends would said, you know, what are you doing out there? You know, I mean, I, I, I say this before, but I, I told one of my friends, and maybe it was Bet, that I had just gotten a record deal, and she said, doing what? <laughs> <laughs> I said, singing. She said, you don't sing. I said, well, I do now. Well, because you were, I mean, it's, a, it's quite a famous story that you'd worked with her in the bathhouse, and, yeah. and there were people there in their towels and things, but you were you were her uh, uh, arranger, weren't mm -hmm. you? I mean, you'd be her pianist. So so was that, that was just the guy, you were the guy that turned up and worked on the music, but didn't it, sing. No, and I loved it. I did. I loved it. So when the singing thing happened and the number one records happened, it was another world. It was just another world. And of course, it threw me off my feet. So what world do you inhabit now then? Because I know that you have, it was a five year residency at the, at the Hilton in, in Vegas. And, and then you're at the Paris. Now, now aren't you? Yeah. at the Paris for a couple of more years. For, yeah. for two more years, um, which is, uh, I would have thought, lovely because you're in, in Palm Springs. It's a nice, not a, not a difficult hop you know, to go to work. And, and they must look after you pretty well there. Oh, yeah. I, it's my favorite gig ever. And most of all, it's because I, it keeps me off the road in hotel rooms and waiting for planes and weather and, and this and that. I, that, that. That got to me. I think it gets to all of us so, you know, who's been, who've been doing it for a long time. Yeah. This was a real gift uh, that I can do what I love doing. And I do love doing this. I really do. I'm not complaining about it. Uh, you know, I love making music. These audiences have been incredibly beautiful to me for all these years. Um, but uh, the road got me. Well, you, but didn't you break your nose recently? Uh, because, I did. Because well, of, I cracked because it. The, yeah. Crack what, your nose. What do you think? <laughs> it's as big as ever. <laughs> was this? Was this? I assume that that if you are in a hotel room, a different one, different layout, different setup, night after night after night, it's, it's it would be very easy to forget where you are. Really, I'm surprised I didn't pee in the closet. <laughs> Uh, who knows where the bathroom is when you're in the middle of the night? <laughs> so you got up in the night and forgot where and the door was. And walked into the wall. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's dangerous. You guessed. I, I can understand now yeah. why the road would be would be dangerous. <laughs> we um, we got um, Colleen is is dressed up specially for you today in oh, the, yeah. in the in the hub. Who, who is this? It's Colleen. 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 Yeah, there she is. Look, looking very very. Oh yes, I met her before. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and so Colleen's got some uh, some questions for us. What have you What have you got, Colleen? I have indeed. If I can speak, um, Susan Walters from Ipswich says we saw you. In 
in Vegas last year and it was great. At the time, you were asking people to donate their old musical instruments mm. to help the next generation of musicians in the schools in Vegas. How is the collection going? And what has been the weirdest instrument donated so far? Oh, this, is, um, a... this is part of your project, isn't it? Yeah, um, uh, over the last couple of years, uh, we've all been reading, in, at least in America, I don't know what's going on here, but uh, they, they cut the music and arts classes because they've got budget problems. So, you know, the music classes are going and it's killing me because I don't know where I would have been without yeah. that orchestra class. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, I wasn't good at sports, so that was me in my high school. And I wasn't going to join a gang. Can you imagine me joining a gang? <laughs> so I joined the orchestra and it changed my life. It pointed me in the direction that I'm in now. And now I find that they're cutting music and arts classes all over the country. So I do what I can do. So I, you know, I, I formed this Manilow Music Project and I, I do my own thing and then I try to encourage people to donate instruments to their schools and that's what that's what the and letter is about and, and in, in Vegas uh, whenever we get uh, batches of instruments we uh, fix them up and we give them to the uh, high schools and middle schools all over the, all over town. Oh, that's a great yeah, idea. That's great. Thank you. Okay, Colleen. Next one, Colleen. Yeah, um, David Much says I am playing playing Tony Forte in the musical version of Copacabana in really? June and wondered if you had based the character on yourself. No. Well, you know, maybe, uh, you know, uh, yeah, yes, no. It was a, it was a, a play, you know. It was a play, but you know, m maybe there were there were parts of uh, of uh, Tony that that were me, because he does come from a, from uh, at least in the movie he does come from Brooklyn, and and mm -hmm. he did play the accordion with uh, mm -hmm. me, and uh, he was a struggling songwriter, and so yeah, it's maybe, sounding maybe, pretty close. Yeah, yeah maybe it's it sounding close. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> 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 what else you got, Colleen? Um, Tracy Strong says, of all the places you have performed um, in the UK, which one sticks out most in your memory? Oh, that's Ooh, a, that's that's a, a that's tough, tough one. It's always here in, 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 uh, here in London. I, I've done Wembley a lot. Yeah. And now this O2 is, oh boy, that's a beauty. That's a beauty. But which one sticks out? You know, Manchester, we've had a great time in Manchester. They're wild. And, uh, but it's, it's, it's right. Oh, the Palladium. The first time I did the Palladium in 19, 1821, whatever this <laughs> was. It's really, I'm so old. And uh, we got here in 1978, and I didn't know anybody here. And I thought, oh, man, this is never going to work. And we sold out. Oh, night after night, it was, I'll never forget. OK, my answer is the Palladium. All yeah, right? that's a good Very answer. Good. Last one. <laughs> Uh, last one, Simon Rotman says, I love all of Barry's song, songs. One song has a special meaning for myself and my wife, Could It Be Magic? Right. Especially if my wife's name is Melissa, and one oh. of the lyrics in the original version yeah. referred to Sweet Melissa. Yes. Um, but he's noticed that Barry doesn't sing those lyrics anymore, and he was just wondering why not. Oh, well, it feels to me like when I sing Could It Be Magic, I sing to the whole audience. And when I, when I used Sweet Melissa, it felt like I was leaving out most of the, the of the audience, so I, I, I changed it there. But you know who I, 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 I was singing, not really singing to, but the name that I came up with was about my friend Melissa Manchester. And so Great I used singer. Uh, oh, another wonderful singer. So I used that beautiful name. Wow. Um, you're going to stick with us throughout the uh, the morning, aren't you? You're going you're to play some of your of your songs. From Whatever the, you from want. The song. Well, that's what. What a oh, no. anything we want. You anything play, you want. Any, any of your songs. Are, are there any that? Yeah, I know what you're going to say here, no, but are there any that you think, oh, no, not, not oh, that? No, of course, you know, I'm, I, no, but really the truth is I'm going to sing one that you would think that I'd be very, very tired of, and I'm really not, but I, I won't tell you what that is. It'd be okay. nice to know some stories behind them as well. Oh, yeah. What you think yeah. of them. That'd good. Be good. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank well, it's you. absolutely yeah. lovely to see you. And we, we'll say right now, I'm sure we'll mention it again, but you're at the O2 uh, on the 4th of May to the 7th of May. Mm. And, uh, and, and your new single is, is going to be at the end of the show, so absolutely not to be missed. And Barry's with us all morning. Thank you. Thank very you very much. much. Thank you. Well, what